climate change is a reality for many communities around the world. Rising sea levels, stronger storms and severe droughts have forced governments and international agencies to propose climate adaptation measures, like sea walls, drought-resistant crops and even relocation. But for many, these top-down approaches don't always align with their needs, values or even their legal rights. Take the example of Cartagena, Colombia. Here in an informal settlement, residents face severe flooding risks. The law declares this area a high-risk zone, which means no improvements can be made and homes should be dismantled. But many residents of these settlements have a different vision of climate adaptation. They resist these legal restrictions. They mobilized local organizations, planted mangroves to stabilize the coastline, and demanded better living conditions right where they are. This is not just a social resistance, but a legal one, a defiance against laws that they feel strip them of their dignity and rights. For them, climate adaptation isn't about compliance, it's about justice, the right to stay and the right to protection from climate loss. Our review of the literature shows similar stories from around the world. In the Pacific Islands, for years rising sea levels have threatened the very existence of their residents. Many legal frameworks already treat them as climate refugees, but the Pacific Warriors, a group of activists, reject this label. They demand dignified migration and the right to stay on their lands. They're not sinking, they're fighting. Their resistance isn't just cultural or political, it's legal too. This adds to a growing number of cases where people challenge international laws that fail to recognize their sovereign human rights and fight for adaptation strategies that honor their identity and their right to self-determination. Then there are farmers in drought-prone regions who are encouraged, even legally pressured, to plant drought-resistant crops. But they resist. On the edges of their farms they experiment with these new seeds, but inside they continue with traditional farming methods that have sustained their communities for generations. For these farmers, resistance is not about denying climate change, it's about resisting laws and policies that threaten their autonomy and their way of life. They argue that traditional crops taste better and are part of the culture, while shifting to the new crops require additional invisible labor. These examples show that resistance to climate adaptation isn't just about saying no. It's about challenging laws and policies that disregard local voices. It's about using non-compliance as a political voice, a way to demand adaptation plans that consider their lived experiences. Resistance has its limits. It can put people at legal and personal risk and doesn't always lead to immediate change but it does reveal the power of communities to shape their own futures. It calls for policymakers to rethink the legal frameworks around climate adaptation and to listen, truly listen, to those on the front lines. Because adaptation is not just about surviving climate change, it's about living with dignity, justice and the freedom to shape one's own destiny. Policymakers should engage in dialogue with loud protesters, but also with those that quietly resist.